Hi everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. This is an extra tutorial, I don't usually upload on a Thursday, but yesterday I uploaded the big mama of lanterns. So this was uh, the one that I shared yesterday and you seem to really be enjoying it. So much so that I received quite an overwhelming amount of emails and messages and some comments all saying, oh, we'd love to make a small one. So I thought, oh, okay, because usually I get requests and stuff, but not to that degree. And yeah, so many of you were saying, oh, I really want to know how to shrink this down. Um, Sam, can you give me the measurements for the smaller size? And I just thought, oh my God, I can't, you know, work this out and reply to everybody and it would just be too hard to do. So I <laughs> showed my husband last night and he said, well, you're gonna have to make a smaller one. So that's what I've done. So if anybody missed this one, I'll share the link up here now so you can have a look if you do want the big one. And the um, the ones that I've seen people have made already that shared yesterday, they look amazing. They look so, so nice. So thank you for sharing them and keep doing so because I do love seeing them. But this was, yeah, this is lovely. It holds a big battery operated candle. So really, really nice. Um, so this is my mini one and it holds one tea light and it is so dinky. It's two by two by three, four, four and a half. So it's a really nice one and it hangs perfectly on the tree. You can see at the back there, I've got the tea light. This is battery operated, make sure it's battery operated. Um, but also you could put sweets in there, put them in a little cello bag and kind of stuff them in the back. Or when I talk you through it, you could pop them in the bottom because this is a different construction. So this hasn't got that separate black base, which I did on the larger one. This is all done together. So let me just turn the lights off and show you it lit up. That's as dark as I can go because it is still daylight. I've just drawn my curtains, but you can see if I bring it up there, it seems to go darker. How cute. And you can see I've got a little music note vellum there, which shows up as well. I'm going to make loads of these. These are all going to be hanging on my tree. Okay, so that is what we're going to make today. So let's crack on. Okay, I've made some variations. Oh, don't want that there. And um, yeah, hopefully I've done it so that everybody can create it again. So you need obviously a little tea light. These are just from Ikea. Yeah, I think they were Ikea. Um, that's the, for the foliage. Again, some people message. I do share everything in my blog, so do go over there and the link's always shared below. Sometimes it's a few hours after the video goes up, but it will be there. Um, and it's this one here, and it just cuts out these really lovely little sprigs. So that's what I've used there. Um, I've used that same hardware that I used on the bigger one. These were old stamping up little um, embellishments but they look like screws so I'll be using them again okay I've already made the little topper piece and again I've put a little bell on it and you can see those there okay right now I've done it in two separate pieces now the reason I've done it in two separate pieces you, you cut this all from one piece of letter paper or um, A4 but rather than doing it as one continual strip because when it if you were to do it you know imagine that was all together the height or width doesn't fit through my Big Shot because I have the, I'll just show you here, mine are just the, oh gosh, the six inch wide plates. Okay, so you can see there, it just overhangs. And that way obviously it won't go because it's too wide. So I've done them as two separate pieces so that even people with a smaller cutting board, um, you know, die cutting machine can do this. If you know what you're doing and you have the bigger Big Shot, and you know to just keep that as one piece and like so you imagine that's all together so it would be a piece of eight and a quarter by six and three quarters and you would just need to score at two four six and eight okay so if you've got the bigger big shot then you can do it as one piece if you don't like me I've already done that bit so I'll get rid of that now you need two pieces that are four and a quarter by six and three quarters, okay? So first of all, along the four and a quarter inch side, you just wanna score at two and at four, okay? Then rotate it so that that, no, actually, we'll do it this way again, because you can make this taller if you want to. So if you wanna make it taller, rotate the cardstock so that quarter inch tab's at the top, and you want to score at three quarters of an inch, one and three quarters of an inch and then rotate all the way around so that quarter inch tabs now at the bottom and score at two 
That way, if you want to have this as 9 inches, 10, 12, you might want a really long, tall lantern for some reason, for something specific to go in it. If you rotate it and just make sure that the other end you've scored at 2, then you know that your base will all fold in. Otherwise, if you're just sticking with my measurements, you're just going to score at 3 quarters of an inch, 1 and 3 quarters, and 4 and 3 quarters. Or, like I said, rotate and just score at 2. It's the same. Okay, so you want to do that on two pieces of cardstock. Alright, there's my other one, but like I said, I've already prepped that one. Then you need a little thin piece here for your handle, which is, well my other one was five, so let's just stick with five by three-eighths of an inch. And then, rather than having that separate black base that I did on the larger ones, this is just a strip just for decoration and again the strip around the top there so you want one piece that is eight and a quarter by three eighths of an inch and again another piece as well we're not going to score these we're just going to wrap them it's so much easier and it is just there for decoration then for your vellum so again this is from that same pack that I used the other on the other one so I don't know where this vellum was from but again there you can see it's just little music notes it's really cute and I thought quite festive so you're going to need three pieces that are one and seven eighths of an inch squared okay and I've also I've gone ahead ugh, that came out wrong I've also gone ahead and I've popped my double-sided tape now I am using the very very thin um, it's just over one eighth of an inch if you don't have this don't use anything thicker what I would suggest is you use a little thin bead of wet glue or tacky glue okay but when we get to that bit I will explain it in more detail and then to cut my windows I've got this square here which is just a little die cut and this one is one and five eighths of an inch squared you need something that size or smaller don't go bigger because if you go any bigger like you've just not got the room I've literally gone to what I think is enough any bigger and you're just not going to have a good kind of um, side join there okay so yeah that size or smaller you need to do a little bit more scoring which I had forgot about so I told you how to do the, all the main ones what you want to do is pop it back in the four and a quarter inch orientation with the quarter inch tab on the right hand side and you're going to score three eighths of an inch just down to the first score line five eighths of an inch just down to the first score line and one and three eighths of an inch down to the first score line then go along and score at two and three eighths of an inch down to the first score line, two and five eighths of an inch down to the first score line, and three and three eighths down to the first score line. Okay, so if I just bring that up, you can see there, these are all these other score lines, all just down to this one here, which is that three quarters of an inch score line that you've done before these ones here these I'll talk you through again if you watched my other one you've already made it you'll be whizzing through this because you'll know exactly what it is that you need to do next okay so grab yourself a ruler a metal ruler or something with a metal side this Tim Holtz one does have that and what you're going to do is so this is your quarter inch tab um, and then you've got these larger rectangles here within those large rectangles you've got one here and then this one here that's where we're going to score these diagonal score lines to create this chimney effect. Now you don't want to do anything to that score line there. So there's one there and then there's that random one there. All that is is a tab to attach the chimney part together. You want to be working where this square is here. And this is a 3 8 of an inch. Is it 3 8 of an inch? What did I say that measurement was? 3 quarters of an inch square. So we're working from that one. So you want to, from the rectangle here, from the bottom left or right, you want to score up to the bottom left or right of that three quarter inch square. Like I said, ignore that score line, okay? So I'm going to go and just define mine a little bit more. So just score, like I said, from the left and the right down to the left and the right of the rectangle and go across to the next one. It's exactly the same as the larger lantern it's just all been scaled down you can see there what I've done okay I'll pop a little template of this on my blog just like that just so that you can obviously you know make it out a bit better but it's pretty self-explanatory and if I show you this one where we've cut it you should be able to see that's those that random one that I said don't you know ignore because it becomes a tab and then these are all those triangles that we're going to be folding in 
Okay, so you want to do that on both pieces. Then on both pieces we need to do some die cutting before we burnish or anything like that. So you've got your square here. Now what you want to do is bring it up about, what was it I said, five-eighths of an inch, yeah. So I'm just going to pop my ruler down there. So there's my five-eighths of an inch. Pop that in, but I am going to move it down just a tiny bit more because the cut line of this is actually in the middle of that metal frame. It's not right on the outer side there, so I want them to look as similar as I can. Got a bit of washi tape just to keep it in place because it is a smaller stamp prone to moving around and I obviously don't want this to budge. Okay, so I'm just going to pop that one in my big shot. Okay, so that is what you will have and you need to do that on both of your pieces that you've got here. So next we are going to burnish these score lines. So be careful along that join on your that kind of edge there because obviously it is going to be a lot weaker. And then just do all of those ones. Top one's going to go that way, but I'm using craft cards, so it doesn't matter about cracking and things like that. Okay, so you can't, don't worry about any of these other ones for the minute, but that's what you should have. Then we just need to do some cutting. So just grab my scissors. Okay, so with the tab on the right hand side, okay, you are going to cut up these ones here, which are your base, and again, this one here, and then just remove that one okay so we've just got this little tab rotate it all the way around so they're now facing away from you I'm just going to swap use my snips actually so you've got all these score lines here first of all actually along the tab just snip that little one there okay so you've got those that still got that score line there it's this one here that I'm going and cut down and then just cut that whole piece out like so. So you see now where the tab, so the tab should just stretch along the side where you've got this this big rectangle here. That's all you want the tab to be apart, attached to. Okay, then go back along here. So first of all you just want to cut down, I'm just going to cut down that one there, just tidy that up a little bit. So that's the first score line. Then you've got your square here, that little three quarters of an inch by three quarters of an inch square, and then this other score line. That's the one you want to cut down because you want to create this as a tab. Do not cut that one because otherwise you just cut it off. Then go along, so there's your middle score line. Go past that and go to the next one, which will be the start of the next square, three quarters of an inch square. And then you want to remove that piece completely like so go along remember you've got these other two here don't cut the first one cut the last one like so and then go back to that beginning one and just remove that completely okay then you want to just snip that one would have already been I've already done it but just snip underneath so you go along to create that little tab so you see I've just cut enough up to this, again, this three quarters of an inch square. So again, this one here, just cut just to the start so you can fold it. Again, I will put a little, um, you know, template of all those cut lines so you know which ones to cut and which ones not to. But, you know, that's what you want. These two need to be loose little tabs off of the left hand side of that little three quarter of an inch by three quarter of an inch square to create your chimney okay hopefully that's made sense and I haven't been too confusing it seemed a lot easier on the larger one I think because it is just so big it was very easy to see all the score lines so now with the triangle kind of sloped score lines you need to fold them in oh and you need to cut down this one here right through the middle just to the top of this score line here so the top of where your windows are just so that you can then burnish those okay it's a little bit more complex, it's, <laughs> but it is still easy. Persevere. Like I said, I'll put those templates up and um, 
I'll try and get that up before the blog or well, as I'll get that blog up um, ready for when the video goes up. Okay, so you will have two pieces like that and then you will have your vellum. So you'll have three pieces. I've already stuck one down. Now I'm treating this as my back, so I'm going to keep this one empty because that's the one I'm going to use to pop my tea light through. So flip it over and then take off your back. So like I said, make sure that you only use a very, very thin tape or if not, use a wet glue because otherwise if you go too thick with your tape it will come through and show on the other side. So this one that I've got here literally is enough, it's the border, make sure my music notes the right way up, it's the border if you see now when I pop it down. I'm actually using that tape as a guide when I stick this down. So now, just make sure that's all stuck properly, when I turn it over you can't see any of the tape. Okay, so again with this one here, okay, so that's that one there. And again, you should do the same with that one, but you'll just have obviously one empty. It doesn't matter which one, it could be this one, it could be that one, that one, it really doesn't matter. Okay, so next we want to start popping it all together. So I'm going to use my red tape along my tab, like so. And again, on this one here, wet glue's fine, but I'm just because it's so tiny, this, this piece, it's just a bit easier. And just make sure they're both stuck down. I'm gonna start with this one first. And you're just lining everything up. So just make sure your base score line is like here. They're all lined up and the tops meet there. And just go over that, like so. If, when you go round and you pop your tabs down, and it overhangs, see I can get away with it. It's just slightly, ever so slightly coming in. I'm going to just take off the very, very outer part where the glue isn't, and um, where I haven't actually put the tape on, like so. Just so that when I bring it round, it doesn't come into my window. There you go, you won't be able to see it now. Let's stick it down and then it'll make more sense. So just fold this side over and then fold that all down flat. It's just the same as constructing any other box. So it should all lie down nicely. So you can see there that that hit that, that join isn't coming into the, my little window frame there. Okay, so that's what you will have. Then this is gonna be my front. So there's my back, this is my front. So this is gonna be the last one to stick down. So all of these are gonna go in. Now this is obviously how you can have your if you don't want to have this open, you could put vellum on this as well and just have it as a treat box. And what I would suggest is you attach another little piece of card, stay like that, just fold it in half and attach it to the bottom and then obviously cut it a bit shorter, but put a little bit of Velcro there or you know just seal it completely and then you could have it as a little box that that person can then undo the velcro and then un open the box up and take out the gifts that way as well so if you do want to completely conceal it you can do that um, but yeah there's obviously other ways to use this as well so before we stick the base down the base is actually going to be the last bit we do you want to do these all these side bits at the top so the easiest way I've found to do this because it's much smaller with my wet glue pick any one of the triangles and just do one side so they're like pairs, so you've got one, two, three, four pairs. Fold that in, fold that them both in, squeeze them together and put the whole box flat. Okay, and then just spend some time making sure that's nice and secure and also all lined up as well. Okay, so now already I've got a really nice corner. Then go to the opposite one, okay, so again, pop some glue just on one of those triangles like so, fold them both in and then fold it flat. Okay, so now when you bring it together like that it will start to form its more 3D form. This bit now is a little bit more fiddly but as long as you go in from the top here with your finger it's still pretty easy to manage. Just turn in the next kind of pair that you're working on and again pop some glue like so, fold them in and then what you need to do is I'm put with my finger, I'm just kind of pushing it to one side. So I've pushed both of them to this side here, and it just allows me to get in there with my finger and my thumb. 
and just really make sure that's all nicely secured. So it is still easy to do, but it's just that little bit fiddly. You can also go up that side there if you've got some tweezers, like so, and then kind of fold it over to the neck, the other side as well, just so you kind of get an even join. But there you go, it's just the same. And then the last one, fold them both in, and I'm just gonna squeeze it inside there, like so. Again, it's all gonna kind of come out now because I put too much on, but that's fine. Like I said, the craft card's really forgiving for stuff like this, which is why I love using it so much. Okay, so there you will have that piece. Next, you wanna do kind of the same thing, but this time all of those tabs, so there'll be four tabs, pop your glue on a tab and bring it in and stick it down. Make sure you get it all nice and straight, like so. That, dry, that glue will dry clear. That's what you want, so go to the next one and pop some glue, bring it out, fold it in and then pop it back in again. Okay, so that is what you should have. So there's your little chimney. So now we can finish the bottom. So fold in the back first and then I'm gonna add some glue to both of the sides, like so. This would look so nice with a little piece of jewellery in it. Imagine a nice ring or something. Like the big present we always say, you save till last and just leave it hanging on the tree. And um, I think that would be so pretty. Especially if you've got any special birthdays around Christmas or near or on Christmas Day. Um, I know some people that have birthdays on Christmas Day. And um, yeah, I think that would be really nice. Nice necklace. You could probably even get a watch in here actually if it's in a nice little pouch or something. And then the last one, I'm just gonna fold down over the top there. I didn't take any wedges off the bottom, but it's, it's so small, it's, it's fine. And then you can just go inside the back there with your fingers and just squeeze it all down, make sure it's all nice and secure. Okay, and then just the fun part now to decorate. So you've got your two larger strips and then you've got that smaller five inch strips, that's your handle. So the back is where I'm gonna start and do my join. So I'm just going to cover a little bit shorter than the width of my cardstock that I'm gonna use um, with glue. So I'm just going around all of my four sides there. So this glue dries completely clear anyway, so I'm not too worried. Start from the back, like so, and just wrap it around, keeping it really hugging that bottom. You don't want to see any of the brown. And then you can just pinch all of the corners just to kind of really embed it into the, the cardstock there. And if you've got any overhang, just pop a bit of glue, but it should wrap round perfectly, that eight and a quarter inch length. And there you go, how cute that look. And then I'm gonna do the same with the top. You don't need it this long, but it was just easier just to say that. So again, I'm just gonna pop my glue around the top there, starting from the back. And again, just wrap it around. And then I'll just trim off, just pop a bit of glue, just to seal it. And again, just pinch it on all of the edges there. There's that piece. And I'll do my handle in a minute, then I'm gonna stick my lovely decoration. That's what does it. As soon as you put that on, it just completely transforms it. Pop a bead of glue on the back and pop that in the middle. Again, I can just go in there with my finger and just so I can really stick that down. And then my little handle, which is this piece. Put a splodge of glue on one side, like so. And then again on this side here. And just kind of just curl it a little bit there and then it should wrap around perfectly again you can have this as short long you might not even want to put one on there but these how nice will these look as table favors as well with a nice little truffle inside or each one with a tea light in all lit up I just think it's gonna look so pretty in fact I think I'm gonna do that I might do them as little favors for my tree and um, for my table Okay, and then any dry glue you might have, I just use my amazing um, Siron rubber here, adhesive remover rubber. It's brilliant, gets everything off. There we go, and then I've just got two of my 
little screws left here. You could put brads, like I said, for the, the other tutorial. Pop one there, and one there, just stick them down. Okay, and there you have it. If I just bring it up there so you can see all the detail. How adorable. So I've got another candle, pop that inside. Oh, it is so cute. I think it's the cutest thing I've made in terms of it's small. I just absolutely love this so much. You can just kind of see the candle there. So there you have it, two really, really dinky, cute lantern tree decorations or table favours, whatever you you want to use them for but I hope this has answered all those emails and comments and uh, requests to do a smaller one I hope this is a good size I think it is I think it's balanced and everything else so yeah I think it should work really well so hope you've enjoyed it as always please share these over on Mixed Up Crafters and I'll be back again with my normal tutorial tomorrow thanks for watching bye